Here we go. We got everybody. I don't. I don't see Jim. He was there. He's eating sure. pizza. Oh, okay. <laughs> got it. All right. We're gonna okay. Go we're get our we're streaming. Meetings. Yep. Committee meeting started. We have seven first readings, no second, one third, and no pending. We're going to go right into community development. Andy? Right, open community development at 602, all members present. We have five first readings, starting with resolution 21R22, the resolution authorizing New Franklin to apply for an OH16 community project funding grant for the construction of a pavilion at the New Franklin Sizzler Field Complex and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This is a $241,301 grant to which we would owe Gatchel 1250 to write. It doesn't wow. look like it doesn't look like we have any matching funds for this one. Is that correct? Uh, we we don't entirely know on this one yet. Um, the uh, this one is well, I won't say it's a little bit obscure, but it came to us. Uh, the OH 16 has to do with Ohio Congressional District 16, and uh, the funds that may be available here are part of the American Rescue Plan funds. And as it's been explained to us, and uh, Gatchel helped identify this for us, and then uh, we followed up with Representative Gonzalez's office, um, Mike Cunnington, who happens to be a former New Franklinite. Uh, is one of his uh, chief of staffs. Uh, anyway, uh, each congressman is going to get to nominate 10 community projects. Now, he's got a big district, uh, that, which doesn't surprise you. Uh, but um, we are trying to be one of those 10. And uh, they have not released the specific guidelines for uh, much of it. To, in other words, how much can we get? Is there Are they going to expect any matching grant or whatever? So we're submitting it the number you see there, that 241000 that was the bid that we received uh, back in the uh, summer of 2019 uh, when we uh, went for an ODNR grant for this. And uh, uh, that grant was not, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we weren't successful on that grant application. We've reached out to the, uh, to the vendor who has said that they, there would likely be some increase in the cost. But uh, and I don't know if we would we, we still haven't determined whether we'd have to rebid it or not, but but that's the number we're using to make the request for the grant. So while it seems like a little bit of a uh, in, not, not much hope, um, Gatchel seems to think we might have a shot uh, because not too many people are aware and there was a pretty quick deadline and our grant uh, had to be the grant application had to be filed today. Um, so uh, this is as much as anything authorization from you folks to to proceed with this, uh, like all grants, if we're lucky enough to get it and it turns out there's strings attached that we can't meet, we don't we, we can decline it. But uh, uh, we've got a shot and boy, it sure would be beautiful, wouldn't it? So it would be fantastic. So, okay. So anyone have a question on that? No, sounds good. B believe we can probably waive the three on that one. Sounds like we have to. Uh, next up is 21R23, a resolution authorizing New Franklin to apply for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Ohio Nature Works grant for the construction of a tennis slash pickleball court at the New Franklin Scissor Field Complex, declaring that this resolution is effective immediately on Paul Passage. We just mentioned ODNR. Do we feel our chances are a little bit better on this one? Yeah, we do, uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, and we, they said no before for the pavilion, and I guess we understand that. But boy, this project is uh, attractive for uh, uh, every age group. Uh, when we talk about the tennis for the high school and the grade school kids, and then the pickleball for the seniors, uh, we, we there's a general consensus that this is a kind of a project that uh, uh, that will score a lot of points with them. Uh, the maximum award is 150,000. And that's what we're asking for. And they would require a 25% match of that would be $37,500. Uh, the, uh, the grant writing fee is 2,500 on this. Um, the, uh, uh, the, in terms of the matching money, I mean, we, we're still, I'll speak to this a little bit later, but we're, we're still in the formative stage of this. Uh, we've, we're tied in with the U S tennis association. They're helping us with the planning. We just got some extensive, 
plan recommendations from them um, today. Uh, this is probably going to be four or five hundred thousand dollar project. Uh, there are funds. If you might recall, the Parks Commission has made this their uh, priority: the tennis pickleball courts. Uh, and we have funds allocated uh, up to one hundred fifty thousand this year, uh, if we uh, if we need them. Uh, and, and this is a project that probably then would go into next year, probably be built in the spring. So then we'd have parks money next year as well to, uh, to, to supplement whatever the difference might be. So this would be a huge piece of it. Uh, if we can, if we can uh, be successful on this, the grant application has to go in, in, uh, June. Uh, I am working on right before this meeting started a, uh, a real estate donation agreement for the land. This would, this would be at Sisler park. Uh, we'll start calling a sister complex, be back towards uh, across the street from where the eighth grade football field is. Uh, and uh, uh, and the schools have agreed to donate that land to us uh, for the uh, that we need for the tennis courts. Uh, in return, we would give priority to uh, the high schools for uh, competition and practice. Uh, and that wouldn't be just in Manchester, it would be Manchester. Uh, certainly, well, any of the four school districts that have a need, but we right now we identify those as Manchester and Coventry, uh, and uh, so that's that's pretty much the package. And and uh, we're asking you to approve the grant application. That, that grant application doesn't have to be until June, but we're going to try to get in a little sooner, probably as soon as we can get the deed to the property. Okay, I don't believe we have any reason not to vote on that tonight. Moving right along to 21R25, a resolution authorizing New Franklin to apply for a 2021 AARP Community Challenge Grant for the construction of a tennis pickleball court at New Franklin Sizzler Fields. And uh, so this would be for 250,000 at a cost of 900 for the grant to us. That's a pretty substantial uh, grant. This one came across our radar. Um, I think Leland Matheny uh, identified it first of all for us. And then we talked with Gatchel and we got the paperwork on this. Um, there, uh, it's their 2021 AARP Community Challenge grant. We looked at some of their uh, previous, uh, some of the others that, that, that had been uh, awarded. And there's a lot of similarity uh, to these. There's a variety of different projects. Uh, it can be uh, transportation, civic engagement, diversity, uh, but also public places that improve open spaces, parks, and access to other amenities. Uh, they don't they don't put a cap on a grant amount. Uh, they say that uh, it can range from several hundred dollars to several thousands or tens of thousands for larger projects. And in looking at some of their past projects, there's a little bit of both. Some of them look to be pretty major and some not so major. But uh, this is a... Uh, assessment criteria. This is a scoring like a lot of these grants are. And um, the, the biggest uh, out of 100 points, 65 of those points uh, go if we can declare a, a positive a need for positive changes that grow or sustain the community's effort, efforts to become more livable, especially for people 50 and over or focuses on in, uh, uh, diversity. So I, we've, you guys have heard me talking about pickleball and you've heard of it from other sources. And uh, we think that pickleball component is, is a big deal. They also are interested in the uh, ability to proceed on this. And we're going to be able to show in partnership with the U.S. Tennis Association and also the uh, public schools. Uh, and then uh, they're interested in volunteers and we're going to be able to show them our NETS committee, uh, which is uh, really a, a well-qualified committee that's steering us on this. So not to go on too long, but that's uh uh, so we feel we have a shot at this one too. And, um, wow, if we were able to get one or both of these, oh boy. So, uh, uh, we're asking you to approve that application, uh, to, we, there is no indication of any matching, uh, requirement. Okay. So unless there's an objection, no reason we couldn't waive the three on that one, vote on it tonight. On to 21R26, a resolution authorizing the city of New Franklin to purchase the real property from the proposed split of 6663 Hampshire Road, consisting of 1.88 acres in the sum, for the sum of $15,000. Um, 
I'm assuming this is going to be going towards the, the service garage and the service uh, property there. And it's a pretty good price for, right, for just under two acres. Yeah. Uh, this came to our attention, and Brian said his eye out over there wherever he can in terms of trying to get a little more space uh, as we grow. Uh, and uh, uh, the adjoining property, the property just to the south, uh, they are doing a lot split over there. That property is owned by David Crock, and David sits on our planning and zoning commission. Uh, and Brian's been talking to him about whether he'd be interested in selling any of it. And it turned out he's he's going to sell a parcel. Somebody's going to build over there. I think we can put another house in somewhere. But they're they're doing a lot split for that purpose. And they said it, they didn't have a need or uh, for the 1.8 acres. And we do. It's it's adjoining property to give us more storage. Uh, and so uh, uh, they. Uh, what we did was we got an appraisal. Um, we uh, checked into whether there was any, was there any conflict of interest since we got a planning and zoning member who's, who, who would be the, uh, the grantor on this thing. Uh, and the feedback we got from legal was that uh, uh, as long as it, it wasn't something that, that he had jurisdiction over, and it, it isn't, planning and zoning will have nothing to do with this. This is just a straight land purchase. Uh, and as long as the price was fair. So we, uh, we went to the expense of getting an appraisal. Uh, and the appraisal came in at the $15,000 and that they, uh, he agreed to sell for that price. So uh, I'm identifying it as the proposed split because there hasn't been a legal description or a parcel number assigned to it yet by Summit County, but, but that will follow. Uh, and uh, there was an indication they wanted to make sure that we wanted it before they would go to the, you know, that further uh, step. So. All right. I don't, does anyone have any questions or objections to voting on that tonight? Okay, on to 21R28, the anticipated Tudor House legislation here, the resolution authorizing New Franklin to enter into an agreement with Mason's Cove LLC for the administration, management, development, operation, and maintenance of New Franklin Tudor House Civic Center, declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. I don't believe we're gonna be voting on this tonight. We'll be asking for time and I'm sure there's several things that, several questions that people may have, and, uh, including myself. Uh, Mr. Federman, if I could, yeah. um, and, and uh, everybody was very patient. We had the agreement uh, basically in, in, in spirit, but there were odds and ends that needed to be hammered out that went right up until this afternoon. So I wasn't able to get you the, the uh, actual agreement until this afternoon. Uh, and we didn't get a chance to post it in advance. And without a question, we're anticipating clearly going to a second reading and giving people time in and a third one, if you need one, um, if it's okay, I, I can try in about five minutes to, to <laughs> summarize the, the, the terms in the agreement. Would that be all right? I, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Uh, and some of you may have been able to download the agreement already and have it in front of you, but, uh, uh, the agreement would be between uh, the city of New Franklin and Mason's Cove LLC. And that's what uh, the principal is, Tim Cantor. Uh, and we've talked about him before. Uh, and he has, there is a uh, equity group, I guess I would say, of um, uh, a half a dozen or so investors. And they have, uh, they're going to do business as Mason's Cove LLC. They picked the name Mason's Cove because that's what it was called. Uh, this was all Mason property. In fact, the whole state park was Mason property, uh, not just uh, the, uh, where the Tudor house sits. Uh, so those are the principles involved. Uh, the, uh, the Tudor house and the grounds are referred to as the facility. The initial term would be a 15 year term. And, and I'm going through the contract itself and it, it may not be sequential in terms of trying to absorb all the pieces, but I'm just gonna go uh, through the contract itself. 15 year initial term. There would be the, the option for the manager to extend it one year for every 70,000 that is spent or that's of capital improvement uh, in excess of $1,050,000. So we start with for $1,050,000, although his obligation is going to be for a couple million uh, within the first two, two and a half years, but for the first $1,050,000, that, that kind of buys him the 15 year term. For every, for every 70,000 increment above that would buy him an additional year. Uh, the, the 
as proposed, it's anticipated it's going to be the capital improvements will be between two million and two and a half million dollars. Uh, and if it's towards the high end of that, with the seventy thousand, it would equate out to just short of a thirty-year term. Uh, and we hope that's what it is because we expect them to. to uh, well, quite frankly, if they don't spend that much, then um, uh, this contract's then they will not be performing the contract. So you can think of it as a thirty-year term. Um, capital improvements. I'm over on the page three. Um, all capital improvements. Uh, including renovations to the existing house, new and existing buildings, landscaping, driveway, patio construction, seawalls, docks, lakefront improvements, all other capital improvements become and forever remain the property of the city. So everything that's built out there, the city owns. Uh, there's some stuff in here about confidentiality and trademarks. I'm skipping that. You can read it. Rights and responsibilities of the party. The city agrees to cooperate with the manager in planning for all capital improvements. The city retains the right of final approval as to all capital improvements. Uh, we agree to cooperate in applications for grants and for time to time we'll contribute to approved projects by capital or in-kind contribution if we think it's mutually beneficial for us. We're not obligated to do that, but we, we will if we think it makes sense. Uh, for instance, uh, they're going to reform that driveway out front and make it a turnaround. Uh, and man, the Easter egg hunt was a perfect example of well, there's a million reasons why we need that. So people can drop people off and, and go back out. Uh, and uh, that kind of thing, if we can, you know, if we can have our service department help with that, we will. Uh, so, you know, we'll help where we can help. Um, the city agrees to pay all expenses related to city events at the facility. <laughs> so any of the events that we hold, we, we pay the ex we pay our expenses but we use the facility free of charge. So there's no charge to us for any events that we have out there. And I'll tell you about the events in a little bit. And we're entitled to retain the proceeds of any events, uh, which we'll intend to do. And we'll try to use that to cover the, the cost of the events. And I think we'll be able to do that and maybe more. Um, temporary, the, the port of johns we're responsible for the port of johns So quite frankly, I say that somewhat, see, that's the only expense we're gonna have going forward for the Tudor house. Uh, and, and, and they're going to, well, um, and, and we, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, we agree to repair, uh, complete or otherwise address items set forth on schedule B. These are some existing maintenance issues that we're not asking him to inherit. Uh, schedule B includes replace the roof tiles and secure the basic integrity of the roof. We've had somebody looked at that. We've got some pricing on that. Um, three or four thousand uh, dollars. Inspect and stabilize as necessary the floor of the garage. Uh, if you were in there, this is the attached garage, and underneath there, the, the floor looks a little bit bowed. Fortunately, there's nothing underneath it but storage. Uh, but uh, we don't think there's going to be much of an issue there. But if we need to shore that up, we've agreed to do that. Correct drainage issues at the front of the house, which are causing water damage to the basement restroom. Uh, there, that's what's happened. There's the drainage issue out front. It's caused some seepage. It's caused a little buckling of the bathroom in the basement. Uh, that may be about a $20,000 project. Um, repair the basement stairway and the restroom walls. That, that's part of that 20,000. And then monitor and address swelling of the wood floors in the dining room. We noticed there's some swelling. We don't know if that's an annual thing or not. We had a heating guy come out, take a look. He said, it's got nothing to do with the boiler. There's no seepage, there's no nothing. And we don't think there's, there's much of an issue there, but Basically, those are the items that the cities agree and that we're going to tighten up before, uh, to put it one way, before we hand over the keys. Uh, we also agree that we'll provide snow removal and winter road maintenance. So our guys will plow uh, to the, the uh, parking lot and the, and the driveway. The manager's responsibilities uh, are to manage, supervise, administer, operate the facility, responsible for advertisement, soliciting, and, con and uh, contracting the events. Uh, responsible for performing and funding all capital improvements on the facility as listed in the proposal attached here to and incorporated by reference as Schedule A and in accordance with the timelines for initiation and completion. I I'm going to take this stab at, at screen share at the very end of this. Uh, I don't know if it'll work or not, but th the first phase is basically the grounds, the patios, uh, the driveways, uh, and they expect that to be about uh, half a million dollars or so. 
uh, and that's to be that's to they begin in the fall and to be done by the next spring. Uh, and the second phase is the four season room, which they think will be about a two million dollar uh, one point five to two million dollar uh, building that would start in the fall construction in the fall of next year to be done by the spring of this year uh, of the following year. So two years from now, that should all be finished. Uh, and that uh, that's part of the contract and their requirement for the building and the timelines becomes part of it as well. Uh, in addition, they perform and pay for all repairs, replacements and expenditures as are necessary and appropriate to maintain the facility in good operating condition, maintain the grounds in an attractive manner, pay the utilities and comply with all applicable, uh, all applicable rules. So they, they pay all the expenses. Um, operating practices. The manager shall implement reasonable practices that are substantially similar to the practices previously employed at the facility by the city. Uh, e.g. hosting weddings, showers, private parties, community events, maintaining a park-like setting for residents and visitors, or that are consistent with practices utilized in events conducted at other similar facilities, e.g. Gervasi, Sarah's Vineyard. What this was about was we don't want to see karaoke night on Thursdays. Uh, and, uh, and it's kind of hard to write that. And so the way what we agreed on is that you're going to do the kind of things that we have done and you're going to do the kind of things that are done at the upscale uh, venues like Gervasi and Sarah's. And uh, I, I, I know that's their intention and I think that that protects us sufficiently that we're not going to get the kind of activities out there that we don't want. Uh, prohibit smoking in all buildings, prohibit music outdoors after 10 p.m. Allow the city access to the facility at all times that doesn't interfere with scheduled events. We'll get, we'll get more on that in a minute. Manager, uh, they, they've got no right to lease or sublease or assign. This is their, uh, this is their responsibility. And they're responsible for housekeeping, general cleaning, inspection to keep and maintain the facility in good repair. Um, all right. In addition, uh, additional duties. Uh, they respond to requests. They respond to complaints from customers and clients. Uh, they operate the facilities. All right. Operating expenses and allocation of profits. Gross revenue means any and all economic benefit, rental fees, etc. Net revenue means the gross revenue minus their operating expenses. Uh, and that operating expenses are all their costs to, to operate the facility, which you'd expect. Proportionate share is the city's proportionate share is 10% and the manager's share is 90%. And here's when that comes into play. Um, once again, during the term here of managers shall pay all of the operating expenses. We have no obligation. The manager retains all of the gross revenue until such time as the manager recovers the actual cost of all capital improvements. So once, once they have recovered their capital investment, uh, and not necessarily what they have to pay in addition uh, to, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, profits or shares to, you know, th that's basically their expenditures. If they if they spend two and a half million, once they've recovered two and a half million, at that point in time, the city is becomes entitled to the proportionate share of the net revenue, which would be 10 percent. So going forward, we'd be entitled to 10 percent of the net revenue. And we agree that we'll dedicate one half of that to an endowment fund set up for purposes of making capital expenditures to maintain a facility uh, and to help fund community sponsored events. That endowment fund is not for their purpose. This is city money. And it's designed that if and when this management agreement comes to an end, that we will have a fund in place to continue the maintenance of the property. And when we envision that, it might be 15 years, it might be 30 years. At that point in time, the contract's over. Now it's, okay, we've got a facility. They're it has to be up to date and maintained uh, or, or they breach. Uh, and so we've got a facility in good, in good order. And we enter an, and the city enters an agreement. Either the city says by this time, hey, we can, we can manage this ourselves. Or they come in and, and, and bring somebody else into management, and it'd probably be a whole lot better than a 10% deal. So, um, but uh, as long as they're there, once they recover their costs, we, we will recover some of the revenue. Uh, okay, the transition. 
uh, the contracts for all current events that are booked, the deposits, the prepayments, and the city's obligation to perform the services will all be assigned to the manager. Uh, and the manager shall be entitled to receive and retain the balances due and owing, and he has to, uh, he has to perform the services. The use of the facility. I'm almost done. The city shall be entitled to use the facility grounds for six major events per year to include hosting of the Portage Lakes Kiwanis Easter egg hunt, Saturday morning uh, before Easter, uh, 4th of July event on July 4th, a Christmas open house on the first Sunday of December, a Memorial Day event on the Sunday before Memorial Day, an Oktoberfest on a Sunday in the fall, and a barbecue on a Friday in the summer. In addition, the city shall have the use of the facility grounds for bi-weekly events on the lawn during the summer months on Mondays or Tuesdays, and meetings or other community events on Mondays through Wednesdays. Through Wednesdays. So we've got the lawn uh, every other week on Mondays or Tuesdays throughout the summer, uh, and uh, we've got the building for meetings throughout the year. And that will not just be the house; it'll also be the uh, the four season room uh, Mondays through Wednesdays, uh, which certainly accommodate the kind of things we're doing right now. Which basically are we got one one civic group that meets over there, and we have euchre. Uh, and, uh, and all right, let's see. Um, and in addition, other days and times that don't conflict with scheduled rentals. Uh, we've also carved in the symphony tour of the lakes. We're going to, they're, they're going to be entitled to come once a year. Uh, the city pays all direct costs for those events, but we're not otherwise obligated or responsible to the manager and the facility grounds. This is in bold and caps. The facility grounds shall remain open to the public for use as general park space unless the manager has a scheduled event. And, you know, consistent with what goes on here, that means, you know, the, the daytime, it's going to be a park. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if they have events, uh, other than that, it, it remains a park exactly the same as, as what, uh, what we've done up to this point. Uh, city and the manager at all times shall have mutual access to the facility. That's an important one. The city and the manager shall at all times have mutual access. So we're not giving up any right of access to the facility. We got the right to inspect the facility at all times. Um, so in sum, we're going to have about two and a half million dollars worth of improvements and we're going to have no expense. Uh, and uh, we're going to have all of the events that we have right now, plus more. And we uh, and we've got right of refusal. We've got they have we have the right to approve uh, these these capital improvements as they go forward. And if I can screen share, I'm going to show you real quick uh, what is Exhibit A. Uh, and maybe I'm not. No, is it? Are we going to be able to get that up on our website as well? Yeah, yeah, you are. So why don't I just not try to do that? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, and I'll tell you what we'll do. I will, uh, um, I'm going to put something on, uh, we'll post this for everybody. And I'm going to go ahead and post the contract and anybody wants to review it and anybody's got any questions, I, I now's the time uh, for the community or anybody else. But we've seen that, uh, oh, I should add that the, uh, uh, the Parks Commission uh, has unanimously supported uh, this management uh, the management agreement in concept. It was, it was in these forms and I, I related it to them. So they're in favor of this project. The Tudor House Commission unanimously did so as well. I'll get you the, uh, the minutes from those meetings confirming that. So there's full support of the Parks Commission and the Tudor House Commission uh, as well. And in fact, you know, we had some questions uh, several months ago when we started this, but uh, we, we did, we have not had any, I don't know if you've heard anything, but I haven't heard anything adverse from anybody and we had some uh, some people on that Tudor House Commission that had some, seemed to have some reservations but they didn't weigh in uh, there were two different opportunities and and nobody nobody uh, voiced any objections so all right thank you Mr. Fetterman I appreciate was, your patience it was slightly longer than five minutes but you know we'll let it go I'm sorry uh, <laughs> no, no. I won't yeah. do it again in two weeks I, I, I promise you that so, you should have known I you should have known better than that Andy. five I'm minutes right. I'm like okay five, five minutes 15 minutes, 20, it's okay. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Uh, so I, 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 I'm, for whatever reason, I'm apprehensive about it, and I don't know why. Tim, I mean, all the risk is on Tim and, and his people, and I think it's a great idea for us. I, 
I don't know why I have that feeling, but uh, I think it's a great idea. Anyone else have anything to weigh in on it? Andrew, I think once we get the information posted and we have time for the comments, maybe whatever it is, it just almost seems too good to be true. Right. And it is a great opportunity for the city. Um, as long as we're retaining all of these rights, Paul, I just, I think that we were, you know, as part of the commission, we were looking for that, you know, that we get to control uh, and approve the improvements because ultimately, you know, it is our property. Um, I just, uh, we'll go forward and see what uh, pans out as far as the public's comments. But I think Paul and the legal counsel really buttoned down some of the issues, I think, Andy, that... Uh, that the people on the commission were concerned about, the times, the places of the facility, what events, retaining our rights, being able to use the property on a daily basis. Yeah, I, just, I don't disagree. I, I mean, I, I think, it's, think it's fantastic. It's just- It's gonna be great for our community, bringing in business. It's great for the lake, something you know, different, a new kind of facility. We don't have anything like that. And you guys right. are all on Facebook and you see every day, people are looking for a place to hold events. They're looking for a place to do things. And um, I think this is gonna be a real benefit to the Portage Lakes area. Yeah, I hope he makes his profit or his, uh, his, his money back quickly and then we can start profiting ourselves, you know? Yeah, oh, I think he will. Yeah, same here. All right, anyone else? All right, and I apologize if you see me looking up or get up abruptly, I'm, I'm trapped in here with a wasp. So I may have to go uh, exterminate that, but um, yeah. we will wrap up. Community development at 6:33. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Andy. All right. Move into laws and ordinances, uh, Andrea. Thank you. We will bring our committee to order at 6:33. Uh, we have uh, two items in our committee. One is a first reading, and one is a third reading. The uh, first reading is resolution number 21R24. This is a resolution authorizing the city of New Franklin to enter into a contract with the city of Barberton to provide prosecutorial services for the city of New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This is a contract that we enter into every year. As long as I've known we've had this contract, the terms haven't changed. They would provide services uh, for the criminal and traffic matters that might take place in Barberton involving the city. Paul, anything? I didn't see any change in any of the contract provisions. No, everything is the same. And uh, <laughs> it came to us a little bit late because uh, uh, the law director from Barberton has been engaged in discussions with the Summit County prosecutor and is, has had some questions about uh, what their costs are for this direct indictment. So uh, they were trying to haggle a little bit on the numbers and, and they, they never reached a, 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 any particular uh, agreement. So this is why you're getting this in May for, for calendar year 2021. But you're correct. It's identical to everything that we've done in the past, including our, our cost. Right. Like I said, I think the date was the only thing that changed. Does uh, anybody have any questions about this? If not, uh, I'm going to move that we waive the three readings. It's not anything new on you know, or requires, I think, any kind of public input at this juncture since it's been something we've had every year. Our third reading has to do with the mayor's salary. Uh, Jim, I know I wasn't involved in the meeting last week. Anything that you want to add to this uh, legislation that I'm going to propose we pass tonight? Uh, no, I think we've, we've discussed it quite a bit. Uh, I've, I've heard from... Um, one person that uh, has questions about it. Other people have made comment on Facebook and whatnot. And, and obviously the, the amount is, is uh, uh, a little sticker shock, I guess you could say. Uh, but we have to keep in mind that we're only able to do this every four years. It hasn't happened since we've had a full-time mayor and, and it's overdue. And so the, the sticker shock is just because it's, it's overdue. And we as council need to be more aware of every four years reviewing the salary of this position uh, and, you know, is it current? Does it need to be adjusted, et cetera? So uh, I'm comfortable moving on with the, with the vote if everybody else is and uh, see where it goes. I'm going to propose, thank you, Jim. I'm going to propose then that we pass uh, ordinance number 21-0-01, which is an ordinance to increase the salary of the mayor of New Franklin to $90,000 per year. 
effective January 1st, 2022, with uh, no further comments or questions, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, close our committee. Andrea, yes, I do. I do have a comment. All right. I think all of council received on March 17th the letter from Robin Aki, an email <clears throat> to be read into, and I think it was concerning this because her ending is council members. Is this the time to increase salaries? Is this the time to spend money? Um, would you like to read that in? I think you received it. it was on March 17th. Do you have it? I will not have that handy. And in order to access that, I would have to take this off my iPad. I'm okay, not- let me, I'll just not, go through the points, the highlights that she yeah, did. Yeah, if you have it handy- Because we all received it. I do have it. Yes. We didn't bring it up at the last meeting, but I think we all received it. At least mine saying that to everybody, it has everybody's name on it. Yeah. And it says, um, did you receive it, David? Yes. Okay, I thought so. Do you want to read it? You want me to just go over the highlighted point? If you if you got it, go ahead. I'd have to get off Facebook because I'm watching comments. So go ahead. If you have it handy, go ahead, Judy. Okay, it says, and I'm just going to hit the highlights on it. Um, how does the 2021 proposed individual funds and total appropriations amounts compare to their respective 2019 and 2020 appropriations? What is the percentage? increase or decrease per fund in total for the annual operating appropriation. General questions and comments. Municipal income tax you're talking about, and she gave us a Columbus Dispatch article talking about that RITA is analyzing impacts if cities lose 10, 20, or 30% in municipal taxes. And there was also an article by the Ohio Star and she pointed out that you, you, she gave us the link for that. And out of the 50 states in District of Columbia, Ohio ranks 51st in weekly unemployment claims recovery and 37th since the COVID-19 pandemic began. And um, she's saying that per the December 31st, 2019 state audit, general revenues were 71% of the total revenues. 45% comes from municipal taxes, 43% comes from property taxes. And then she had quotes from the audit that the city is highly dependent upon property and municipal income taxes, as well as unrestricted grants and entitlements to support its governmental activities, which we see from this tonight with the grants that we're applying for. And we've been so lucky with those. The dependence upon general revenues Fifty six point zero two percent of expenses supported through taxes and other general revenues for 2019. Significant increases to numerous new Franklin property appraisals by Summit County, which I had an increase. I don't know about you guys. I think I've only talked to one person that theirs went down. 2020 had mild to severe financial impacts to individuals and businesses in New Franklin and the state of Ohio. Questions, 88% of general revenues come from taxes. How is the city preparing for financial impacts if collections from municipal taxes, property taxes, or both are reduced by 10 to 30%? Fire department revenues are primarily funded from property tax collections. How is the fire department preparing if there is a fund reduction by 10 to 30%? Police District 2019 audit, the total revenues were $811,090. Total expenses were $2,036,188, which required a $1,228,000 transfer from general fund to offset the overspending. With 88% of 2019 general revenues coming from municipal and property taxes, how will the city be able to provide police services if future general revenues are reduced by any amount? Well, I thought you, those were significant. They are. They're, they're, and it's a lot depends on many of your the questions depended on what if, what if. Mm -hmm. Every day. And that's the reason Rita's doing the analyzing the impacts, because they feel that we are going to see a reduction um, 
and you have probably haven't had a chance to read those articles from the Columbus Dispatch. If you did not get this, then you may not have had a chance to look at those. But that was one of the things that was saying that Rita is taking the initiative and analyzing that because they feel it is coming. And you're right, everything is what if. But you're right, we should be prepared. We have to have you know, thoughtfulness in our approach. And that being said, and with all those comments and with all that general information and specific information, I'm gonna move that we pass this legislation tonight, unless somebody wants to more specifically address the comment at this point in this committee on this issue that Judy Jones just made. And those were from Robin Aiki. It's a, it was an email to all of us, Andrea. I don't know if you received it or not, but it was on March 17th. Okay. That was the only thing that I got addressing this uh, was that just one email that I looked into. I'm still going forward with the vote tonight. We're gonna go ahead and close our committee then at 642 and we will address some of those other issues perhaps at another point. Um, thank you, Judy, and thank you, Robin, for bringing that up. All right, thanks, Andrea. We'll go to thank speech you. and drainage, uh, Judy. I'll call the meeting to order at 642, all members present. A reso uh, resolution number 21R27, a resolution awarding a bid to North Star Asphalt <coughs> for the City of New Franklin 2021 road paving project and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. <clears throat> and Paul, it looks like they were the lowest bid by a small amount. And we have used North Star before, I think, and been very happy with them. Am I correct? Both of those, you're, you're correct on both counts. Uh, and in fact, this bid came in under the uh, under the <laughs> Summit County bid. Wow. Uh, so we got a better price than if we had, had uh, we're part of the uh, Summit County Consortium for the Chip and Seal and those numbers haven't come in yet, but we uh, decided to go separate on the paving and uh, that and you're to our benefit. And, and I think is, we should waive the three reading rule if nobody else has an objection. Are there any questions on this? I, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, are we looking at um, all, th all, all three? Uh, plans here? We are. Uh, okay. I'm correcting that. Am I right, Susan? Uh, yes, it's my understanding that we are. We're going to try and get it all done. Fantastic. And the total, the total bid price for this is $1,224,661.57. Uh, and, and as Ms. Jones uh, mentioned, that it's the lowest bid, but it's also very close to what everybody else was bidding also. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, it I've had concerns. Yeah, exactly. It's not a lot. In the past, I've had concerns where we get a, a really low bid and all the other bids are super high. So, you know, <laughs> what's going on there? But but this bid is in line uh, with the other bids we received, one, two, three, four, five, six bids, and, uh, and still came in the lowest. And as Ms. Jones mentioned, we've used them before. They, I, I believe they were part of the uh, South Main Street project yeah. um so so we've seen some pretty good work out out of this company and, and i also like well. to say too jim is we passed something before you were on board with best and responsible bidding which gave a bid sheet to everybody so everybody was bidding on the same level playing field so that always helps out when you're getting bids that they're always generally close we do have one it's a hundred thousand dollars a little bit over a hundred thousand dollars more but that's still within the percentage you know, of, of getting one that's, you know, 10% less or 20%. So having some of the stuff we have in place helps out to keep a level playing field for everybody to bid our big projects like this. And I don't know about the rest of you, but my total for North Star was actually listed as a little bit more because there should have been a period after the 661 and mine was a comma. <laughs> right. So I'm changing that. You're not wrong. Just so we're on the same page. Yeah, that's good. And then we're going to waive the three reading rule tonight for this one and go ahead and pass it. And I'll close the meeting at 645. All right, great. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Anybody have anything for the committee? Jim, we kind of left you out tonight, buddy. Sorry about that uh that that's okay i i'm going through withdrawal but you know i'll, uh, I'll handle it thank you i figure i figure you'd be okay you look you look i gave you a break jim 
<laughs> you look in good spirits. That's good to see. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Anything in their committees? All right. Then I'm going to call the order of the City of New Franklin Council meeting <clears throat> this Wednesday, April 7th, 2021 at 646. If we can all stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Can we get a roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Cox. Present. Mr. Hargett. Present. Mrs. Jones? Present. Mr. Fetterman? Here. Mr. Hawk? Here. Ms. Norris? You're on mute. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Scott? Here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Perfect. All right. That's everybody. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from our regular scheduled meeting of March 17th, 2021. Second. A second, any comments, discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hargett? Here. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? You're mute. Mr. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Abstain. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cotts? Yes. All right. Thank you. We'll move to our public comments. Uh, please, please keep your comments addressed to council under four minutes. We get just got a couple I'll read. One, uh, I support, oh, wait, let's go back one second. Like we were, this came up when we were talking about the Tudor house. Sounds like a great opportunity for the city. Uh, another comment is uh, I support the increase in the mayor's pay. It's long overdue. And then we got another one that says, uh, I really enjoy that you post meetings online. I work out of town almost all the time, and this allows me to still see what's going on back at home. Anything else, Katie? I think that's it. Got them all. all right, great. All right, here we go. We're going to get into our legislation again. We have seven first readings, no second, one third, and no pending. Resolution number 21-R-22, Kelly. A resolution authorizing New Franklin to apply for an OH16 community project funding grant for the construction of a pavilion at New Franklin Sisler Fields Complex and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This was assigned to community development. And if there are no further questions, I move that we waive the three. Second. Second. There's a second roll call, please. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Yes. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. I move we adopt resolution 21-R-22. Second. Uh, first and second, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cotts? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones. Yes. All right, that passes seven to zero. Thank you. We'll move to resolution number 21-R-23, Kelly. A resolution authorizing New Franklin to apply for an Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Ohio Nature Works grant for the construction of tennis pickleball courts at the New Franklin Sisler Field Complex and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This was also assigned to community development and I move that we waive the three on this as well. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? 
Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. I move that we adopt resolution 21R23. Second. First and second, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. All right, thank you. That passes seven to zero. Move to resolution number 21-R-24, Kelly. A resolution authorizing the city of New Franklin to enter into a contract with the city of Barberton to provide prosecutorial services for the city of New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. Thank you. This was assigned to our committee. During the course of that committee, we discussed and had very little comment in reference to this agreement because it's something that we do every year. With that, I'd like to go ahead and waive the three readings. Second. First and second roll call, please. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes, sorry. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Thank you. Now I would like to go ahead and move that we pass this resolution. Second. First and second, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. All right, thank you. That passes seven to zero. Move to resolution 21-R-25, Kelly. A resolution authorizing New Franklin to apply for a 2021 ARP Community Challenge Grant for the construction of tennis pickleball courts at New Franklin Sisler Field Complex in declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This was assigned to community development and I move that we waive the three. Second. First and second roll call, please. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. I move we adopt resolution 21R25. Second. First and second, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. All right, that passes seven to zero. Thank you. Move to resolution number 21-R-26, Kelly. A resolution authorizing the city of New Franklin to purchase the real property from the proposed split of 6663 Hampshire Road consisting of 1.88 acres for the sum of 15,000 and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This was assigned to community development and I move that we waive the three on this one as well. Second. Yeah, first and second roll call, roll call please. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. I move we adopt resolution 21R26. Second. First and second, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. 
Thank you. That passes seven to zero. <clears throat> Excuse me. Move to uh, resolution number 21-R-27, Kelly. A resolution awarding a bid to North Star Asphalt for the city of New Franklin 2021 road paving project and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. I'd like to make a motion to waive the three reading rule. Second. Yeah, first and second roll call, please. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to pass resolution 21R27. Second. First and second, any discussion, questions? I'm, I'm just happy we're getting some paved roads, Dave. There you go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I, I wish mine was dirt, but that's okay. Well, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Hargate? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Thank you. That passes. David, so. you would yes. not be so happy after a good rain if it was dirty. Oh, no. The oh, the yes, you view. would. It would be so I muddy. That's why I got a truck. Doesn't matter. All right. Move to uh, resolution number 21-R-28, Kelly. A resolution authorizing New Franklin to enter into an agreement with Mason's Cove LLC for the administration, management, development, operation and maintenance of the new franklin tudor house civic center and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage you want time on that andrew yeah sorry yeah, yeah uh we yeah. we're asking for time yeah time granted thank you okay we're gonna go to uh no second readings again our third reading is ordinance number 21 dash O-01, Kelly. An ordinance to increase the salary of ma the mayor of New Franklin to 90,000 per year, effective January 1st, 2022. Thank you. We discussed this in committee. I would like to go ahead and move that we pass ordinance number 21-0-01. Second. Got a first and second. Any further discussion or comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Jones? No. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cotts? Yes. Mr. Hargett? No. Well, that passes five to two. That takes care of our legislation this evening. Uh, Paul, take it away. How are we going to do? We got five minutes? Yeah, it's five, just five minutes. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, the right, the cool. Nets committee is meeting tomorrow, uh, and uh, we're moving forward on the uh, on the tennis. we got a great group of, of citizens who have volunteered to help us with that. Pickleball at uh, the uh, uh, Lakeside Park, uh, I'd hope to have it done now. Uh, Brian has been is out of town right this minute and it left us a little shorthanded. So uh, I'm hoping to get that uh, set up by the end of next week. And um, and we'll have some kind of inaugural. If somebody on this screen that wants to be part of the first pickleball game, please let me know. Uh, and we'd love to have you out there. We'll try to see if we can get a little press or whatever in anticipation of uh, what's to come uh, when we when we add some more courts around the city. Uh, South Main closure is coming up. Uh, people have been uh, patient. I haven't heard much from people. Like everybody's been gutting it out real well with the construction on, on uh, 93, getting the water lines in. They do have to close South Main for four or five days uh, as they come around the corner from Giuseppe's from East Caston and make their way to West Caston. Um, I, I will give you some specific dates on that. We expect that it happens certainly here in April, uh, maybe in the next uh, 10 days or so. So uh, we'll give everybody as much of a heads up as we can. The detour is going to be to go up Center Road to 93 and then 
all the way around 619. There's really no other way uh, unless people are going uh, more to the east and they can go up uh, Mount Pleasant and, and cut over that way. Um, Rescue Act funds. Uh, we are told that we will be receiving all the cities will. Um, and the amount that's projected for us uh, in two uh, in two installments is uh, 2.7 million dollars. Uh, and that would be uh, 1.35 million. Uh, they expect to come sometime in June. Uh, and then the balance of that, either at the end of the year or the beginning of the following year. Uh, there have been no, uh, there, there is still no guidance issued by Treasury as to how that can be, uh, how those funds can be used. Uh, it, it appears that it's earmarked primarily for infrastructure or for direct COVID related uh, expenses. Uh, so we shall see, uh, but we do anticipate getting some more money in. We would, uh, one of the things that we've talked about internally is if we can dedicate that uh, to paving. Uh, and uh, then we could go three years in a row with, uh, with uh, you know, over a million dollars in paving and really put a serious, serious dent in, in uh, and not have to, you know, not have to bond out and take on debt to do it. So we're kind of keeping fingers crossed. Oh, well, no, I don't know about fingers crossed. We ask the good Lord to guide us on that one. Uh, and uh, whatever they say, that's what we'll do. But if we can use it for that purpose, we'll use it for that purpose. Um, there's a couple other things percolating out of this federal transportation bill that I've been in contact with Representative Gonzalez's office because it's, uh, that, that's going to sort of that's a doorway to it. Two specific projects we have them working on. And I talked with Mike Cunnington the um, day before yesterday again. Uh, and one of them is drum roll, Congo uh, Bridge. Uh, the, uh, you know, it's one way or another. Uh, so th they like that project and, uh, and it's basically what they would call shovel ready. So um, um, we don't know when the awards will be on that one, but we got a real good shot on that one. Uh, and uh, they're also, they're interested in transportation uh, it's under the transportation bill. Uh, and we talked about, um, oh, years ago, there was a study done uh, to uh, extend Eastern Road uh, to 619 and create an east-west corridor uh, from uh, 21 into New Franklin and then ultimately up towards 77. So that's being revisited. They have an interest in that. Transportation does. Uh, and... Uh, and so we may get some uh, we may get some funding for some further planning on that. That would be in conjunction with Norton, with Barberton, and ultimately with Green. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, there have been some additional directives out from the governor, as you know. Uh, you know they didn't say specifically the word parade. I'm waiting for him to say the word parade. But uh, certainly outdoor events, uh, we're in good shape. Uh, our planning is going forward. We're going to have that first event at the, at the Tudor House on the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. We are continuing to plan for the Memorial Day parade. Uh, and we'll just ask everybody to, uh, uh, you know, to, to be respectful to each other. And I think we could, you know, if you want a mask, you know, great. And, uh, but we'll be outside. And uh, so we, as we, today, as of today, we, we expect those things to happen. Um, the, the, um, Two last things. One is, uh, I've had some, you guys asked last time around, and we're all wondering how soon we can get back in council chambers. Uh, and 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 I, I've been told, uh, I, I got a separate uh, message from, from Robin Akey about a number, well, you guys may have as well, but of uh, different, like Copley Township, and there's some other places that are going back to, to meetings. Um, it, it struck me the township's got three trustees. We got, you know, seven council people. Uh, the, the indoor directives, they still exist. Uh, and they, there was a new health order that came out, uh, on, uh, the day before yesterday. And it says, uh, still for, um, facial coverings at all times in any indoor location that's not a resident congregating, uh, when gathered together, individuals should be in groups of no more than 10 individuals that is separated from other groups by at least six feet. So now we're in a situation, okay, maybe we can have 10, but it, it suggests that, that the, the still the, the social distancing of six feet is still expected. So 
we would seem to me uh, as I we'd have to space out the the council people and make sure they had the social distance and then we conceivably could have maybe some room in the back for some residents but my my major concern is how do we figure out who those people are and and uh, what do we do lock the door and then we say to other people you can't come in and maybe we I don't know uh, it's certainly we're going to keep thinking about it and try to find a way to do it and see, uh, you know, how soon I think that we're going to see a further expansion. Uh, but for uh, right now, it doesn't seem to me that we could really hold an effective meeting. If, if the if the usual suspects, three or four or five people showed up, we'd be OK. If it was a hot button item and 25 people showed up, then uh, we can't get them all in the room. So. Uh, and finally, I think a couple of you folks have already mentioned this, but I think when we're able to get back in the room, that um, this is my idea, it was your idea, and I, I, I agree that we try to do a hybrid and find a way to continue to live stream these because that comment was helpful that the individual wasn't here gets to keep up. So, uh, you know, we tape them and they can watch them tomorrow, but if we could live stream them, at least they may not be able to participate, but at least they could follow. All right, last thing. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I uh, of course, well, you know, the mayor thing, and, and you guys, the mayor thing, you, you've been, I've, I've never asked for anything in that regard. And it's, you made an increase for the mayor, not for, for me. And I respect that. Uh, and I, I didn't venture an opinion on that. And I think that was appropriate. I did want to respond to just a couple things on the finance um, that uh, I think perhaps support the, the decision you made in, in a lot of regards. First of all, as it relates to the police, uh, and I'll make this quick. Uh, it, we are not operating at a deficit. What uh, we have not done, and, and this was way before me, ha we haven't decided, you know, there was no decision to go back and get levy money for the police department. We allowed those to expire as part of the income tax. The fire department is able to operate within their levy money because they got a full levy and we just did a replacement uh, a year or so ago. So they're not operating at a deficit. They, they, uh, we've always agreed and, and committed to funding the balance between what they get and what they need from the general fund money, which is perfectly legitimate use of that, of that money. And the second thing, uh, as far as finance, um, we did not experience as a city the, uh, the significant decline that was projected. Uh, and uh, uh, so we, we didn't see that from, a, and, and uh, you know, Susan maybe can, I may stand corrected, but for income tax or, you know, gas tax or, or uh, general fund money, it, it didn't happen here. Uh, we were fortunate in that regard. We started this year with a carryover in excess of $6 million, and we've never been over $4 million before. Uh, and uh, it's about $3 million more than we were a year ago. Uh, and, uh, and, and a portion of that, of course, was the CARES money, but that's, a, that, that's like a third of it. And the rest of it, I would attribute to um, um, frugality. Uh, and, and we continue to practice that. So uh, today we are in maybe as good a shape as we've ever been economically, quite frankly. Uh, and that doesn't mean we're going to go out and get stupid with it. But uh, there's a sense of comfort there that, that we're able to do, for instance, dedicate extra money this year to paving. Uh, take the money we would normally use on chip and seal, take some money that we got from Nexus for the, uh, from the uh, road maintenance, uh, and, and then add the additional money that we had on hand so we can do the paving and hopefully we'll be able to keep doing that. So I wanted people to, to know that we are healthy financially in New Franklin. Thank you. Ah, oh, you're muted, David. You're muted, David. All right, Dang. back to your comment. There was a comment from Robin in that letter that uh, Judy wrote or read was that the police, the overspending of the police, which is, is not true. It's not true. Like to make a comment, there's no overspending in the police department. That's just, we, like you said, we've never asked for a new levy. We knew back when we added the extra, when we put the 1% on the ballot, that some of that money was going to be used for the police department. And that's what we're doing, correct? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, Susan? David, well, that, that was part of the, part of when we went for that extra 1%, as you said, that part of that was getting rid of that one police levy. And correct. we 
have never said that we were, you know, we've always established that we were going to support the police department in part by the general fund. It's, it's not like, oh, they overspent and we have to help them out. That's just been the plan from the beginning. Yeah, there's a comment Judy was in her letter that the police overspending is why that the general fund was getting in there. Correct me if I'm wrong, that's what it said. It's what it says was, and maybe I misread it, but what it said was the total expenses were 2,036,188, which required a $1,228,000 transfer from general fund. And then she said to offset the overspending. Yes, now, exactly. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure she meant overspending so much as the additional spending. Because as you said, we all knew this was coming from general fund. Yeah, so maybe but, that's the improper word there that she used. Yeah. But she said overspending. So I'm she just did saying say overspending. Was, okay. So that means overspending means one thing overspending. Right. I, mean, I agree with you, you, but you I'm saying to that. you, well, all I right. wasn't trying to turn it. Yeah. What I was I'm trying just, to say is we all that knew comment. that when we decided not, when we decided to do the transfers from the general fund, that that was going to go for the police and that the total expenses would be 2 million and that over a million of that would come from general fund. We knew that. Yeah, correct. We've always said that. Yes. So when we've done the transfers. So I think that was probably a bad choice of wording there. I read exactly the way it was in the email we got. Yeah, I read, I read it too. I read okay. it too. And that's what it said, overspending. Okay. Right. Thank and I'm you. just saying, I think that was a bad choice of wording there. My opinion. I don't know what she meant, but I'm, I'm just saying that's what it looked like to me. All right. All right, great. Thank you, Paul. Any other uh, comments on for Paul? Okay. Susan, do we have a finance report? Um, not a lot to report. We're busy working on the uh, GAP financial, but I did want to um, kind of tag on to what the mayor had said. Um, as you know, we sit down with all the departments before you even get that budget. And, and I have to say that they all have, you know, they all are trying to be very frugal and they are even though we have some extra money this year, they're thinking about how the, what is the best use of that money and what, you know, let's put this aside for future so that we, so that we know we're not strapped. I mean, everybody is coming at it from the right angle. Yeah. And so I have to give everybody credit for that because I'm not the only one saying don't spend money. They're all saying, let's be careful. Let's be prudent. Um, so I, I think that the residents should take a lot of comfort in that. And also a lot of comfort in the fact that we don't owe anybody any, any money. We're not in no. debt. And right now, I think that's a really important thing. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. All right. Old business. I have uh, something for old business. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, you brought up uh, Congo Road uh, Bridge. Uh, a couple things with that. I believe uh, last month you talked about the possibility of some funding coming uh, through the state and that we would know at the end of March. Uh, I'm guessing that didn't come through since we're looking towards the federal government for some help there. Well, it didn't come through directly. It, uh, it, it didn't come through, I guess I'll call it an earmark. Uh, uh, so there was not a specific appropriation from the, uh, from the capital budget for that specific project. Instead, there was additional funding to the Ohio Public Works uh, and, uh, and, and what Senator Rogner's suggestion was that we apply, well, not we, Norton, apply back to OPWC for uh, the emergency funding, uh, because otherwise it goes into a cycle and it'd be, a, it, it, the, the general fund would not be until next year. Uh, the problem with that is that they made a previous application for emergency funding and OPWC said, well, wait a minute, this isn't an emergency. By the time... <laughs> Let's just say, by the time that that application was 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 uh, filed, it was a year after the bridge was down, and OPWC said, "Where's the emergency?" That was a year ago. So uh, we are uh, we have urged them again to refile, and then we're going to try to engage Senator Wilner <laughs> to give an extra push over there with OPWC to see if we can get it with the emergency funding. So. Uh, while we're still while we're trying on that angle it's like we're going to put every oar in the water that we can and there's this one uh and then uh and then failing that 
I'm going to be as aggressive as I can with the county and with Norton of saying, uh, you know, this has got to be done this summer. This just has to be done this summer. So we're full speed ahead on that. Okay. And, and can you address again the, uh, the issue with four-way stop? Uh, it's just that uh, as of this point, there hasn't been, uh, from a traffic study standpoint, um, there has not yet, uh, th there's no, uh, there haven't been accidents up there. There's nothing really that would suggest that we make it a four-way stop at this point in time. And there's already, you know, the detour signs are up there uh, and uh, on Kungle uh, at uh, uh, Vanderhoof. And uh, so in, in its essence, it's only a three-way thoroughfare right now anyway, except for, and I think everybody that goes up there is pretty comfortable with that by this point in time. So we just don't see a necessity at this point. And if you remember too, one of the other problems we had was we had some problems with vandalism up there early on when we were putting our signs up. Uh, and we had to put multiple signs we had over and over. We had to replace these signs. So if and when we make it a four-way stop, we're gonna wanna put the flashers around it. And, and we don't wanna do that until it's a thoroughfare. Okay, thank you so much. And this says signs for kids at play. I just want you to know I have not forgotten that. I'm working on that. All right. Thank you. All us kids, thank you. <laughs> Any other old business? How about new business? I, I just had one thing to bring up. I had somebody ask about what it would take to get a street lamp over at Grill Park. I don't know. I mean, that's really off the road. That would be private, you know, on our own, um, I would assume. But it's just, just something to think about. He says that there's some strange cars there at night. I, I don't know if there's any validity uh, to that. I haven't heard anything other than him. Um, uh, Mr. Fredman, if you if you connect me, I, you know, we'd be happy to look at that. Uh, okay. Yeah, by any, by all means. All right, is you. that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask. Is that something that would uh, work with the uh, NOPEC grant? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other uh, new business? All right. There's a couple. I'll just read a couple comments. There was a comment about possibly having the meetings outside. So I'm not, that is a thought. I mean, we have done early on, we were doing some of our union meetings out in our parking lot of our home. But I don't know. You PA system, we already had one of those and that. So that's, I mean, that's something we could think about. But uh, all right. Somebody also would like the idea, even if we got back together, still have the live stream. I think uh, Katie went ahead and took care of that one question we had. And somebody also thinks maybe we put a roundabout somewhere. But I think Green's got the, whole, uh, the got the whatever on that. I think we're good. So there was a follow up question, Dave, that just came. Oh, okay. From the one I answered. You see it? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, that about you said about a third of our uh, carryover, our extra carryover than we had from years was from the COVID. What did that third equal? That probably goes to Susan a little bit, or I'm sure. It goes I was trying to, to think. We get what was our total cares money, Susan, between the county and the state? Was it about one point two? Actually, uh, like one point five. One point five million. Okay, so that answers that one. So was that closer to yeah it's about a third right because you said it was usually about yeah, and we didn't we, we didn't bank all of that you know we, yeah. we you know we had expenditures out of there so yeah. it's not like that just sat in the bank and that's half of okay our so yeah that that was 1.5 but out of that we spent money and so what approximately maybe a million that we that, that would be fair sucked away okay all right that, what, all what it was here. we saved money on payroll because we were able to use it for payroll so money that we would have used for payroll, we use that those funds for payroll, and but it's the same difference. Yeah. Okay. It certainly accounts for a portion of it. Somebody else is likes the idea of the hybrid meetings. They have a busy schedule, and they can still attend when the schedule doesn't allow. 
Great. All right. That's all I'm seeing, Katie. You good. All right. Call executive session. No need. No need. All right. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. You got a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Great. Thanks, everybody. Good seeing everybody. Our next council meeting will be April 21st, 2021. We'll start our committees at six. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.